Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 27 where we're going to have a look at relative clauses and commas. Now, don't start to panic. This is not going to be an in-depth grammar look at these two areas, but this is going to identify one particular thing that I see as a problem in a lot of the writing that I have a look at. And it might be due to the fact that people have forgotten a simple rule. So in this video, I want to go over that simple rule, which will talk about comma use, and hopefully it will get you to start using your commas correctly, or at least being aware of why you would use commas with relative clauses. The main thing to remember when you're writing a sentence and it has a relative clause in that sentence, your use of commas may change how that sentence is understood. Now that has clear business English and legal English effect. If you mean to say one thing, but your use of commas means the, readers, the reader will understand it in a different way, then this is your fault. And we know it has a legal effect because there are two very well-known cases which are based on how a comma was either used or not used. So this is the million dollar comma case and the 10 million dollar comma case. Go to Google, check out those cases, very, very interesting, all about how either a comma was used or not used and therefore how the text could be interpreted. The key thing I want you to take away from this is to uh, basically to remind you, uh, those of you who had a formal uh, English education in terms of learning English, what the difference is between a defining relative clause and a non-defining relative clause. As you can see behind me, a defining relative clause means that everything in that sentence is important. If we use a non-defining relative clause with commas, what we are doing with those commas is we're separating out non-essential or not important information. So this is extra information, but not necessarily as important as what's in the main part of the sentence. And here is where you can see where the mistake is made because people sometimes write as they talk. And when you write as you talk, then you start to use a lot more commas. And there is where you start, you might start putting commas around important information, but then making it look as if it's not important information. And of course, you might know what you're writing about and what you mean, but for the reader, it, the comma use presents the context. The comma use tells the reader, this is important or this is not important. So context is really important from the point of view of the reader, which is created by your use of commas. Now, there is a modern trend to um, help you guys, and that's what we're going to focus on in this lesson, and that is when you're writing a defining relative clause, to stop yourself from using commas, instead of using which or where or who, we simply use that. And this is something that lots of spell checkers now promote. So Microsoft Word, Grammarly, and many others, when you write which or where or who or whatever the relative clause might be, in a sentence without commas, the chances are the app will prompt you to change that to that. And of course, everyone tends to remember, if you use that, you shouldn't use commas in English. So um, that's the trend, and we're gonna have a look at an example in a second. But I just want to highlight that one point again. Avoid using relative clauses in writing for emphatic effect. So this is okay when you're speaking. So when you're speaking, every, uh, generally the person can see you or at least hear you. They can find out or they understand a lot from your intonation, the way that you present the information. When you are writing, you lose all of that. So if you start using commas, people apply rather a grammar context to that, which then creates uh, then shapes how they understand that text. Okay, let's have a look at an example to try and show you that point. So we've got this. This invoice, which I received, confirms who paid for the item. Now here we've got a non-defining relative clause. How do we know? We've got that, rel we've got that uh, relative clause, which I received between commas. And this makes that part of the sen sentence non-essential. So in effect, we would read the sentence as this invoice confirms who paid for the item. That bit which I received is not considered important. But what if it was important? What if it was important, the fact that it was the one that you received and no one else received? 
but you've, because of your use of commas, you've now made that non-essential information. And that might reflect the way that you speak. You might say, this invoice which I received, in which you're actually stressing that it's you, but because you put that in commas, you're suddenly making that not very important. So that's what I mean by saying something a different way, but writing it using those commas m creates the opposite message. I hope you were following me as I went through that. I was confused. I hope I didn't lose you. But let's see how we could improve that. Uh, the invoice which I received confirms who paid for the item. So removing, removing the commas makes everything as important as everything else on that sentence. And here we've got the rewrite with that. This invoice that I received confirms who paid for the item. So hopefully you can see what it is that I'm trying to say. If you use that instead of which or who or where or whatever the relative clause might be, and if it's appropriate to do so, but it's not because it's not always appropriate to do so, then I would tend to use that because people generally remember when you use that, you shouldn't use commas. Now, there, I know there are one or two exceptions, but this is a general rule. It's not an absolute rule. Okay, so let's go through the teaching tips. First of all, I want you to remember, grammar rules are different between languages. So the grammar rules and comma use for relative clauses that you might have learnt for Polish or any other language, I say Polish because I'm in Poland and I work with Polish people and I, and I know that this is an error when those Polish people write in English. Remember, English grammar rules are different to your mother tongue, your L1 language rules. If you remember to use that, it makes life a little bit easier. It does. It makes your writing arguably a little bit less elegant, but it means that you don't fall into the trap of overusing commas. I want you to take away the message that non-defining and defining relative clauses can lead to legal effects. As I said, if you put things between commas, it can be interpreted as having as not being important. And that's really really important when you use lots and lots of clauses in a sentence, as lawyers and business people tend to do. So this goes back to the earlier lessons of think about what you're trying to say, put everything at the front of the sentence, use sentence structure, sentence structure, having difficulty with the words today, use sentence structure to create short sentences, one point in every sentence, and then that way there's even less chance of your writing being misunderstood. So lesson 10 for sentence, stru sentence structure, lessons one and two for, them, uh, for putting everything at the front of the sentence. And very, very shortly, there'll be some lessons on emphasis as, a well, as well, which we'll also talk about this. Removing unnecessary commas is generally considered a good thing. Unnecessary commas lead to complications, in particular legal complications. So getting rid of unnecessary ones is always a good thing. And also in getting rid of commas, it might get you to think about your message and go back to square one. Sometimes you just can't get away from the fact that your draft is not a good draft and you have to go back and think about how to say the same thing in a clearer way. And there's nothing to feel bad about when you go through that. You are going through the drafting process, you're thinking about the reader, you're thinking about your writing and making it as successful as possible. Okay, time for questions. If you're watching this on Patreon, you'll see the links to the questions below. If you're watching this on YouTube, Facebook, or uh, LinkedIn, then please think about supporting me on Patreon where you'll get access to all of my questions and the answer videos. So I'd like you to read the sentences below in the, in the document you'll download and redraft the relative clause either using that or another form. And you'll see in my answer videos, I give you plenty of options. So uh, this invoice which I received confirms who paid for the item. This receive that this invoice that I received confirms who paid for the item. Simple change, but once again, it's about building good habits.